Hey, Gary Hoover here. Today I'm going to talk about naming your company. This is one of those areas where I'm um, iconoclastic. I run against the grain. I say the opposite of what a lot of people are saying, or at least what a lot of people are doing. So, so be it. Here's what I believe. Your name is so important to your company, and it's the first thing people hear about you, and it has a lasting impression. And if your name helps explain what you do, that accelerates the whole process. Whereas if you're talking to somebody and you say the name, and they're like, well, what the heck is that? Well, then that adds more energy you have to put into the explanation. It takes more time. And let's face it, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, you're always going to be explaining your business to people, to your employees, associates, your future associates, people you're trying to hire, your suppliers, your bankers, your lawyers, your investors, yourself, your spouse, your family, your kids. So if you can give your business a name or a nonprofit entity that clearly communicates what you're doing, I think that puts you so far ahead. And that seems to be kind of passe these days. I've recently seen what I see the other day, one called Yaller. Um, there's one advertising on a radio or TV called BZ or BZ or you can't tell. I think they may spell it finally. But when you hear it, you have no idea of how to spell it. There's something going around called score it. I don't know whether it's like that or if there's an E in there. These are awful names. And when I look, I'll be tomorrow night, I'll be judging another business mind competition. And I'll bet you half those names will be ones I think are really awful. That's the odds. And, and a lot of times I walk through the offices like an incubator or something, all their doors, and they're just all awful. <laughs> so here's the thing. It's worth the extra effort to come up with a name that tells what you do, that makes it as clear as possible. And it has to be a generalized clarity. In other words, um, maybe if you're only selling something to 17-year-old boys, you can use the lingo of 17-year-old boys and they'll understand it. But if you're selling something much broader, then does grandma understand it? Do little kids understand it? So it can't be like an inside joke. Now, in this context, look at some of the great names. My belief is among the best names of any um, company, online or not, is this one, 1-800-Flowers. I can tell what they do right away. And even if tomorrow they stopped taking phone calls and killed the 800 number and were just a website, I would still know what they do because of the tradition. I don't think they're going to stop the phone calls. But this works both ways. It's a great name. Um, I would make the case, now here I may get some angry letters or whatever, I would make the case this is not a good name. Now I'm not knocking Jeff Bezos and the company. I think they are awesome in so many ways. But that's a name that when you tell people what it is, well, when you say, oh, I work for Amazon, you have to immediately follow that, well, it's an online book selling company. Now, that's what you had to do in whatever, mid-90s mid, mid 90s when she started up. You don't have to do that anymore. And there's no question, once a name is established, maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, like we think of Saks Fifth Avenue as a really classy store. Well, there was no Saks Fifth Avenue. There was a Saks store that was a low income or modern income store. It wasn't a fancy store. It wasn't on Fifth Avenue. It was on 34th Street. And that guy, Mr. Saks, which nobody affiliated with classy merchandise, built a big fancy store full of classy merchandise on Fifth Avenue. The name now rings like, oh, wow, what a cool name. Radio Shack, an awful name from a viewpoint of like how it sounds on your ears and what it kind of means if you picture it, but it doesn't matter anymore because it's Radio Shack and they're everywhere. Well, when you're doing a startup or you're launching a new product or a new brand, it ain't everywhere. It hasn't yet built its name. And you will be, these guys, if they had been books.com, they would be further ahead. Now, in saying that, they would have more readily explained what they're doing. Now, you've got to be careful because obviously they didn't want to end up there. So maybe they should have been shop.com or buy.com. You know, somebody else did do that one. Now, this doesn't mean don't be clever. I mean, if you can figure out something that communicates your idea effectively, not some like hidden inner joke for advertising agency people. I see some of those like, well, we're going to call our company Insperity. There's a new one going around. Well, it sounds like integrity and it's inspired. And oh, what a wonderful word. Well, it's meaningless. It's awful. Uh, but I would say a good name, maybe not as good as 1-800 Flowers, is Google. Because we've been talking about Google eyes and googie eyed and and... <laughs> 
It, it works. It kind of feels like you're looking for something. So that's a kind of a bridge word. It's not as obvious as 1-800-Flowers, you know, um, but a lot more obvious than Amazon. And, and, and what this is all about, because when I talk to people, it's, why do you have the name? Like, well, it's the only one that's available. Well, you look, nothing's available. No, you didn't look hard enough. You've got to care about it enough to work at it like anything else. When I dream up a new company, I probably average 30 hours working, doing what I call thesaurus work. Get a Roger's International Thesaurus. That's the most widely circulated one in the U.S. Not an alphabetic one, not an A to Z one, but the big one uh, uh, that, that has um, uh, all the words in English language, pretty much. And you can go into it and look at different ideas and on the same page see other ideas that are related to it. And that's a key tool to naming stuff. There are some other good books that will help you name stuff and come up with superlatives or whatever. Um, and again, I'm not saying don't be clever. And, I, I, and I'm not saying don't invent a word. Like if you're a flower shop, then, you know, I don't know. I haven't figured this one out. But, you know, do, do something something different to it or whatever. I don't know. It should be a word that when people hear it, they can spell it. They can visualize it and they can spell it. Don't make it hard for people. This is all possible. You know, It is not impossible. It just takes a lot of work, like everything else. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you later.